So what to do about pet stains on carpets. And what I'm talking about now is particularly urine stains. So you've got a puppy and the puppy uh, uh, urinated on the carpet and of course as they train and get the house out trained, this can happen on many different spots, unfortunately. So what I want to do is just first explain how, what is the science behind it? Why is there some cases a yellow mark, some cases a dark mark, and when can it come out, and when it's less likely to come out, and so on. So urine goes down on a carpet, and it goes down as acidic. As soon as it leaves the body, it's sterile, and it's a, 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 a contains a lot of salt, and it's, if you take a pH meter to it, you'll find it's acidic, right? The urine goes down on the carpet, and then as it goes in the carpet, it starts to dry, and then crystals form. The salt crystals, as it dries, is left behind. So it's a little bit like going to the ocean and getting a little pan of seawater and put it in the sun and let it evaporate, and you're going to have some crystals there. That's going to be salt crystals. So the same thing would happen if the puppy has a number one on your carpet. So this happens, of course, in different spots. And then what nature does, it takes care of what's ever left behind. It's a bit like a tree falling over and the worms come and take care of it and they eats it up. And 17 years later, there's a little bit of a stump left on the floor. So it's a similar thing that happens here. Bacteria's responsibility now is to go and break these salts down. So what you then find is bacteria moves in to break the salts down or whatever's left there. And as the bacteria breaks these salts down, they off gas. So they create a smell. And this is the smell that you get from the urine. Um, and that creates that bad smell in the air. Now, you will then find that because these bacteria breaks down the salts, they off gas. So they, 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 there's some gas that comes off or they create in the process of breaking down. So we can say maybe the bacteria you can maybe go as far as saying the bacteria is sort of farting a gas that is uh, creating this smell. And also this gas is alkaline. And it's this that changed the color of the carpet. This is what harms the wool because it's highly alkaline and wool is sensitive to a high alkalinity or a high acidity. So, um, of course, as soon as the urine goes down, it's acidic. Um, so it's most probably not that acidic to harm the carpet in that moment in time. But as soon as that alkaline hits because the, the, the bacteria breaks it down, that then creates that alkaline solution that then changes the color of the carpet and harms the wool. So if you have a wool carpet and the puppy has had an accident on it um, and it changed color, and usually it goes a yellow color or something like that, it can be other colors as well, and then we'll come around, we'll clean it for you. Now, you cannot really repair that color of the urine. In some cases, what we find here when we clean rugs, for example, we'll get a beige rug in and uh, there will be a yellow stain on that beige rug. So what happens then is that we'll be um, cleaning the rug and drying the rug and there's still a stain there. So what we'll do is we will use a special product that then reduces this yellowness and not harm the wool. And this is then left in the sun or in that sunlight to UV to work. And the mark then looks better. It, it's not always guaranteed that it would go. So if we clean a carpet in particular, uh, the one this person has sent in was a, a slight pale, purple, uh, pale blue color carpet. And this carpet then had these marks on it. And because it's lost that pale blue color, when you clean it, it's not going to go. And then, of course, what we now want to do in this case is sanitize the carpet. So we want to go in there, rinse out what's in there. So that means the salts that's left behind, the bacteria that's left behind, that all is going to take, be taken care of. And then we have a product that we can sanitize the carpet with. And I've got it here. So we will be using this EnviroSafe product. This is exactly the same product that we will be using when we um, also clean surfaces when we've been to your home. So it's a really good sanitizer and what we'll do is apply that to the carpet and then rinse the carpet out and then leave your carpet as sanitary as possible. Now, of course, here's something to remember. If the puppy has grown and the volume of urine has increased, every time they wee, you might see a little tiny mark on the carpet that size. But under the carpet, the, 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 the urine is soaked and many times you'll see a little stain on the top, but at the back, it's a big, big mark. So you can't wet the carpet so much to rinse that out because if you have 500 mils of urine going down, you need to three, three, four times that to rinse into the carpet and pull back out. 
Now we've got tools to do that, but it's not always practical because you can harm the carpet in the process. So it's a fine balance between making sure what we do is safe for the carpet, but at the same time remove as much of this as you possibly can. Um, and of course what I stress here is, especially if you've got a light pale color to the carpet, or maybe even a dark carpet, and you started seeing those yellow marks, I tell you now those marks will not go out. The other way to do it is the color repair the carpet where you can actually apply a color back to the carpet but this is expensive and if you have multiple stains all over the carpet then it becomes more economical to rather replace the carpet but if the carpet is not that old you're happy to live with a few little marks here and there then we can come in and do the work for you so that's not a problem at all um, now another thing that can sometimes happen is these marks can go dark brown or black and you clean it and it just suddenly comes out now the reason why that happens is there's synthetic carpets as well. So typically more polypropylene sometimes, nylon, although nylon can also be affected by the urine alkalinity in particular. So a polypropylene carpet, and many times when you go to a carpet shop, you'll find they sell your carpet as bleach cleanable. Now that means that it's polypropylene, solution dye. That's another very technical thing that I'm not going to bore you at the moment with. But basically that carpet is fairly bomb proof with regards to losing color or changing color. So what you find is this urine goes on the carpet and sometimes it can attract dirt because it's slightly sticky. That saltiness is sticky and it becomes dark and a, black, a dark patch can appear. And I've seen it over the years where you go to a carpet like that that has urine on it and you clean it and just simply by rinsing it you just rinse that away and it cleans up really beautifully. But of course you have to put quite a lot of cleaning solution in there to pull it out. And sometimes this urine soaks right into the underfloor as well and the smell never goes so it depends how bad it is. So that is also something to consider. And lastly, um, what we need to consider with urine as well. I've seen this happen before where you go in and you clean a carpet it looks perfectly fine. Somebody's moved in two years ago. It's a beautiful home. And they bought it from the previous owners that had a dog. And the carpet looks a bit grubby, but it was okay. So for two years or so, they lived there and they said, you know what, Pierre, come in, get the team in, let's clean the carpet. We go in, we clean the carpet, and we know they've had a dog. So we'll be using this product I talked about earlier. Spray it on the carpet and then clean the carpet to, to, to keep it sanitary. And we clean the carpet, and the following day, they call us up and say, well, Pierre, the smell is just absolutely horrendous, and I don't know where it came from. Are you sure the water you used is clean? And then what has happened here is, um, of course, many, many years ago, when we were very new to this, we went, well, we'll come back and we'll clean the carpet again. And of course, to this day, that's what we do. So we will increase the application of sanitizer, and we'll clean the carpet. In most cases, that deals with the problem. But there are rare situations where the urine has been so deep ingrained in the carpet and sometimes in the subfloor that the cleaning reactivates that salts because the salts has dried out so much that the bacteria can't break it down anymore. The salts remain in the carpet because the home is really dry and I can run the heating in the, in the winter really high. And then eventually the smell goes. And we go in, we clean the carpet, and suddenly that moisture has gone back into crystals. The bacteria moves in, they start breaking it down. There's an awful smell in the room, and that caused that smell. And unfortunately, after two, three cleans, sometimes we just say, you know what, have the money on us, have your money back, take it, go and spend it on a new carpet, because unfortunately, that's just the way it is. The risk you have is you can come try and try and try and rinse that carpet out. Eventually, what will happen is if it's a tufted carpet, it will delaminate, so that means bubbles appearing on the carpet, and then you're going to replace it anyway. So I'd rather give you money, go and buy another carpet and replace that. And also very important, replace the underlay. And if the subfloor has been affected, it's best to seal the underfloor, um, sometimes with a coat of polyurethane or something like that, a paint just to lock that uh, urine in and then put the new underlay on and a new carpet on top. So that should deal with it.